Aldis podcast is brought to you by Aldis International, supplying your expert AI and digital transformation staffing needs across the US and Europe. Today, you are listening to our AI in Action series, where leading minds in AI from across the world share their story, success, and advice. AI in Action cuts through the hype and explores the true impact of artificial intelligence in our world today. You're listening to AI in Action. I'm your host, JP Valentine. Our guest today is Megan Gaffney. Megan is the founder and CEO at Veda. Welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. It's our pleasure. So Megan, we've got a lot to talk about at at Veda, but let's start with yourself. Can you give us a a bit of a background of, of your journey, particularly where you got started in technology and then take us to the idea behind Veda? I'm a bit of a unique founder in the healthcare space. I don't come from a healthcare background per se, but I spent many years building a political firm in Washington, D.C. And during the formation of the Affordable Care Act, I had an opportunity to listen to patient advocacy groups and health plans, uh, big hospital systems and individual providers coming and talking about the healthcare system that they wanted to see what the healthcare system would look like in the future. And at the time, affordable care was something that everyone was working towards, but it felt to me like they were stepping over piles of money on the floor to get at the hardest parts of the problem when there was a lot of innovation happening in other industries that could really bend the cost curve in healthcare. So after complaining about it quietly with my friends for several years, I had a chance meeting with my co-founder, Dr. Bob Lindner. He's an astrophysicist and he had been building automation tools in the field of radio astronomy. It doesn't seem like a natural uh, kind of connection between big telescopes like the ones that you see in the movie Contact and working with provider and healthcare data, but What I learned really quickly in talking to Bob was that there were tools being used in data science and machine learning in the academic space that hadn't yet been applied to healthcare data. And those things could speed up the process of information moving through the system and make care both more affordable and provide better data to patients at the same time. And so that's really where VEDA was born from this idea that we could use machines to help people and help them do the things that they do best, which is get people healthy and keep them well. I love that. That's such a cool story behind the startup. And, and it's great to to see that while you didn't have the technology background as per se, you, you saw an opportunity to bring something to market. You've already given the platformers to, to, to Veda and what the mission is. Can you talk to us about uh, the early stages of the journey from deciding this is what you wanted to do? How did you go about formulating a <laughs> sort of template, a blueprint as to how you were going to do it? And then who did you need to bring in early on to get the technology side up and running? Yeah. So the beauty about starting a company in an industry where you don't have a background is you're forced to do a ton of listening. I spent the first year really of crafting VEDA and figuring out where we fit in the market, just meeting with as many smart people in the industry as I could and listening to where manual work was keeping people from delivering the care that they needed. And so we ended up spending a lot of time talking with health plans, the insurance companies that are oftentimes the front door to people seeking care. You go to their website, you're looking for a doctor in your neighborhood that can take your insurance plan and also see you quickly because they're accepting new patients and can treat the thing that's wrong with you. Really simple questions were bogging down these huge companies and keeping people from getting the care that they needed. We learned as much as we could, and then we tried to sway some of those smart folks to stay on as investors and advisors. And then we gradually started to hire within the industry. So building both our technological team and our sales and marketing team with a balance of folks from outside the industry with fresh perspective and people with a lot of knowledge. And that combination of knowledge and imagination actually ended up being pretty core to the company's DNA. Fast forward to 
the current version of beta data you've obviously been doing this since uh, what is it now 2015 so i'm sure yep. there's been several uh, milestones along the way can you give us some insight into what it's like now the current status of the business particularly looking behind the scenes of the actual technology team a combination of your engineers analysts data scientists and and maybe some recent uh, projects that you're particularly excited about we're in this great growth stage. I've never been more excited to lead this company than I am in this moment. So coming out of the initial COVID crisis, I would say, to the current state, which is living with an ongoing pandemic, there's been a real openness to automation in the healthcare space. And that has brought new customers and opportunities for us to grow. We actually grew revenue 6x last year, which I tell people, I feel like the dog that caught the car a little bit. <laughs> you feel like it's a good idea and then, oh my God, you're going so fast. Kind of don't know what to do next. So what we had to do was bring in people that had seen the movie before, expand our leadership team. And on the technology side, we were so incredibly lucky to find our new CTO, Bo Ruff Marsh. She came to us from Science 37, took them from a small team to an IPO, which is an incredible journey. And she and I partner every single day on how do we build the team that can take Veda to $100 million in revenue and beyond. What that means is that we are building out our scientific infrastructure. Bob's still here. He's taken on the role of chief science officer. And so He's working in the R&D space and managing our data science team. And Bo's bringing in a huge amount of new engineers. We're actually doubling the size of the company this year. So engineers, project managers, product owners, UX designers, everybody that is coming into VEDA has the opportunity to help the company grow in this really unique stage. And we have great employees who have been with us for many years, employees three and four, both on the technology team, have been here since the very beginning. So you get this great fresh um, injection of new energy, but they get to partner with people who have known our product and our market for many years. So we're really excited about where we're going and just staying focused on the mission of automation in the service of making healthcare work better for people. Yeah, you should be excited. It sounds like it's been an incredible journey thus far and you guys are only getting started. Can you give us some insight into a typical customer journey from first conversation where they get to learn a bit about what you do to the implementation process, what your technology team needs to do to embed its tech with a particular customer and then some impact. What's the impact um, for your customers who eventually use Aveda's platform? So. I think about our customer journey and our team's role in that journey as really guides on their AI transformation. In most cases, when we come into a customer, this is the first advanced automation that they're using at all. And so there's a lot of education and conversation that we get to have about how to do this, which is really an opportunity for our company because we have a perspective on that. The first conversation with health plans lately has been around some new regulations called the No Surprises Act. What that means is the federal government has come in and said, hey, people need to know where they can find a doctor and who is participating in their insurance plan so that they don't get bills that they don't expect at the end of the day. And that's something that a lot of folks have experienced. You go to have surgery and all of a sudden there's a bill that shows up for an anesthesiologist that's out of network and you didn't realize that you were going to get that bill. Practically what it means for insurance companies is they need to process data from doctors and hospitals really quickly and accurately. And they need to do that all and get it in front of patients within 48 hours. Today, how they process that information is with large teams of people hand keying in from a spreadsheet they get from a hospital into a provider data management system downstream. It's a little bit like a time machine. And <laughs> going back 10 years ago, the processes haven't changed much. And all of that manual data entry means that the health plan employees can't focus on things that really 
help people get healthy. They can't focus on wellness programs or reaching out to make sure that folks who have been discharged from the hospital have the proper follow-up care. They're busy typing in spreadsheets from one screen to the next. It also means that when a doctor decides they're taking new patients, it can take more than a month for a patient to actually be able to find them in an online directory. Our system solves both problems. We automate the process so that information from hospitals and doctors gets to patients within the 48 hour window that no surprises requires. And we can increase the level of data accuracy by doing lots of checks and QA along the way so that patients get the right information. They're not just getting it quickly, they're getting it with accuracy. It allows our customers, for a single employee at one of our customers, they can do the same amount of work that 12 employees could do in the past. And now health plans have resources to invest in more meaningful programs that help their members get healthy. So it's really a win across the board. From a technical perspective, how our technology teams help customers implement is walking them through a configuration process. We have the theory that people will adopt automation more quickly if you're not asking them to re-engineer their entire tech stack. So we call this automating in place. What that means is sometimes we have to configure our outputs or APIs so they're more easily usable by the technology that already exists within a health plan. And it means that we can implement very quickly. A typical EMR system may take years to go live. We can get customers live within eight to 12 weeks so that they can start seeing the value of automation. And that gives them confidence to automate and use technology in broader ways within their business. You are listening to the Aldis Podcast. When you're looking to scale your team, or if you are interested in showcasing your company in a future episode, reach out today. Or if you're in the market for a new role, visit our website to view open positions, www.aldis.com. Focusing now on your technology team and, and the various roles that have been necessary in order to get Beta to where it is today. I know you've got an ever-growing technology team specifically focusing on what we would call yeah, AI. Can you give us some insight into the current makeup of the data team, whether it's a combination of your cloud engineers, data engineers on the analytics side and machine learning? What does it look like today? And part two of that is with the amount of growth that you've got coming up, what is it going to look like in one or two years from now? There are a lot of pieces that are required for this puzzle to be successful, to bring a product to market. There are a few roles that I think are really key to our success and how we've constructed our teams to work together. One is probably not the place that you would necessarily start, but a very early hire, one of our first 10 employees was a user researcher. Because in order to enable our data scientists and engineers to produce products that are gonna have value, they need to understand where the data is coming from and where it's going and what those use cases are. So we've centered our technology and the building of our technology around really understanding the customer so that engineers and technologists are equipped with the information they need to build something meaningful. Beyond that, we have a data science team that includes several former astrophysicists now. So we definitely have a role for folks coming from a PhD background of deeply understanding how to create meaningful algorithms that can solve problems, but also how to test things in the real world to make sure that they're working correctly. They work alongside teams of data engineers and data analysts that are working on pre-processing tools to get the data ready to go through our system. Cloud infrastructure is a massive part of our business. We are moving very large volumes of data and we need to do it in a scalable way. We'll actually be tripling the size of our cloud infrastructure team this year and always looking for folks with a background 
in cloud engineering or other engineers who want to build their career and step into learning more about cloud engineering. The other thing that I think is something that's important for us is thinking about the UX and the front end experience. Our users are not software developers and they're not data scientists. The people that are using our platform are the same frontline employees that were hand keying in the data in the first place. And so they need to be able to understand how to use a tool. They need to be able to easily accomplish tasks that run very complex automation in the background, but feel simple to them. And so it's really this combination of understanding our user, building really surprisingly delightful front end experiences. We try our best to make it not feel like business software and having scalable data science, machine learning, data processing happening in the background that our users don't necessarily see but they experience the results of at the end of the day. It's great to hear the focus on the user experience, particularly with it being non-technical staff. It's critical for them to have the confidence in the technology in order to make the successful transition from manual to automated. Megan, I want to switch direction slightly now and focus a bit more on your team, specifically around how you've been able to grow as fast as you have, but while also <laughs> balancing a, a broad mix of diversity and inclusion across the workforce. I know sure. it's something that's specifically important to you and you've been able to do an amazing job. So can you give us some insight into why that was so important and more importantly, how you've gone about doing so? Yeah, so I really had two missions in founding this company. One we've talked about already using technology to help people, right? We want healthcare to work better. But at the same time, it's also important for me, for VEDA to be an example to investors and venture capitalists that there are different ways to build a successful startup and a scalable software business. And when I say different, I am very explicitly talking about myself founding and leading this company the playbook for how to do this right was definitely not written for me. The good news about that is when the rules aren't written for you, you don't have to follow them. After we raised our Series B in the summer of 21, our first hire was a chief people officer. Her name is Snape Patel. She's the core of our growth because we built a team very explicitly around her called the people team. It's all about recruiting the best talent wherever it is. We are a remote company. We hire the best engineers, the best marketers, the best salespeople, wherever they are. And we hire from really diverse backgrounds. I, we want our staff to look like the people that we serve and the communities where healthcare data is the most important. What that's allowed us to do by investing in the people team up front is to have broad recruiting efforts and at the same time develop and employee experience and retention program that is just wildly successful. Every month I get to have lunch with a group of employees to hear about their lives and learn where they want to grow. We have learning and development programs. We're creating opportunities for folks to engage socially, rolling out a new 401k match and benefits programs. And my absolute favorite benefit that SNE has allowed me to keep that we started at the very beginning of 2020 is a monthly mental health day, which our remote employees really appreciate. It's just an acknowledgement that life is difficult in the current moment. And we all have an opportunity as whole people to take a step away, take a breath, and come back to work refreshed and renewed. If you only remember one thing, if folks that might be interested in growing a startup, investing in the people team is the best investment you can make. It's been wildly successful for us. Megan, final question from me then. Look, it's it's been a very exciting journey thus far and you've really sort of 
paved a, a new way for people to think about founding tech, technology startups, a lot of learns. When you look ahead for the future of VEDA, given what you've been able to build thus far and the success you've had, what are you most excited about for the next few years of the business? I am excited to see VEDA become an integral part of the healthcare ecosystem. I know that in five years, people will look to us to automate different parts of the healthcare ecosystem than we have already. Maybe it's in claims processing or pharmacy benefit management. But the core of what we're doing will remain the same and remain fundamental to healthcare working better, which is allowing people to do what they do best and automating everything else. And so I'm really excited to help the healthcare system move in that direction. And I'm excited to build the team that's going to get us there. And that's really the next thing that's on the horizon. But the opportunities in the future are really limitless. Thank you so much for coming on today. I really appreciate you sharing your journey and from coming on here, hopefully inspiring some others to, to take that step to found their own company. Your use of AI, data science, analytics and automation is really impactful and we look forward to seeing what you and everyone at VEDA are able to accomplish in the years ahead and we wish you the best of luck with it. Well, thanks so much. I certainly appreciate the opportunity to chat with folks today. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Aldis Podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review. We are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and any Android podcast of choice. You can also head over to our website, www.aldis.com, to listen to more podcasts, view our open roles, and stay up to date with industry news. Thanks for listening, and stay tuned for more great episodes coming very soon.